Hi, Dawn here from Distinctive Pet Care. I'm so excited today because I have finagled one of my sitters. <laughs> I almost had to handcuff her, but um, Look, Kathy McKnight, yep, yeah, she's here. <laughs> she is here by her own free will. Um, Kathy's here, she's one of my pet sitters, and we thought it would be super helpful to give you an inside view of our sitters and what it takes to become a professional pet sitter, things you might not have considered, and then also uh, some special attributes about our business and Kathy in particular if you're looking for a pet sitter. And uh, I started my business 22 years ago before pet sitters were really known. Now there's there's apps that you can hire a pet sitter that you've never even met to come into your home. Good, bad, or indifferent. It's just changed a ton. One of the unique things about Kathy is that Kathy was a client of ours way before she became a pet sitter. And we have actually found that to be a very cool way to uh, recruit pet sitters because they understand the quality of care that our service, Distinctive Pet Care, wants to provide to our Littleton community. So um, we were talking and you know, it's been super hard these last few months because Cody um, was uh, Kathy's black lab that she got in 2004 and that's when she called us before she even got Cody. Um, she called us for to do midday puppy visits and uh, he recently passed away and he was 14. 13 and a half. 14 um, and he it's just been hard you know um, and again another way Kathy can certainly be empathetic to those geriatric clients and understanding how close they are to your heart so um, we knew when we talked ahead of the the videoing I said it would do Cody a disservice not to be able to mention him because he was quite notorious um, <laughs> And uh, I was your, wasn't I your sitter originally? No, I don't think you were. I wasn't? No. But I, I reason... think you filled in sometimes because you were on the log notes. <laughs> oh, okay. She also said that she saved our paper log notes from 2004, <laughs> which in a way is, is neat because she was able to, after Cody passed, go back and, and revisit his puppyhood. So I think that that's kind of a neat idea. Now we do all of our log notes online. They're, um, located on your portal and I guess they are there forever so that's a neat keepsake as well. So let's talk about, I'm mean, just going to ask Kathy some questions and uh, get some answers and see, you know, maybe it gives you some insight into, again, if you want to come join our team, we are looking at hiring for the summer uh, and uh, overnight people particularly, but um, pet sitters that do midday dog walks and AM and PM visits in the, um, in, you know, during the week and weekends for traveling clients. So, so let's talk about your job before you were a pet sitter was a geophysical analyst. <laughs> How do you go from a geophysical analyst to being a professional pet sitter? Uh, well, <laughs> After many layoffs in that industry with the ups and downs, I knew this was going to be different this time. The industry has changed enough where they don't need as many people and after layoffs they were not going to be hiring as many people. And I went through six months or so of trying to decide what other kind of things I could be doing and I kind of brushed up on some skills as far as the computer and I kept thinking because I originally in February I think saw that at the pet spa that Dawn was looking for people and then I saw some ads that she was looking for pet sitters and I kept thinking about it and I thought well I don't know and then one day I walked in I said Dawn <laughs> you still need pet sitters <laughs> and the rest is history the rest right is it's history. been a couple <clears throat> years yeah, it'll be two yeah. two years in August. Yeah, so, yeah. and she's yeah. one of our busier pet sitters. Okay. And um, uh, one of the things that I hear a lot from clients is that Kathy sort of has this very calm demeanor and calm presence about her. And so dogs respond 
uh, very, you know, and cats, right? We don't want to leave out our yeah, kitty some, loving I have clients. Cats. <laughs> yes, um, that they just respond well to you. And you've had some situations. You were telling me a story about a dog that the owner was amazed that the dog yeah. actually came out and. Right, she's got a dog. She has two dogs. One's outside a lot of the time, and the other one is an indoor because as a puppy, she was found in a box with her litter mates, and so she's afraid mm -hmm. of everything people and she doesn't know she's going to be hiding upstairs and the day I went for my meet and greet the client brought her down on a leash and she came over to me and sniffed me and then kind of went outside but the owner was kind of amazed she'd come that close to me on the first time I walked in the door yeah and you mentioned the meet and greet one of the the, the kind of intricate parts of our business which we find is beneficial not of course just for the client but also for the pet sitter get a chance to see where you're walking into see the pets meet them find out their routines see where things are located um, get a chance just to sort of hang out and start building that trust relationship which is yeah very yeah. important uh, what else do we have let's see what was what's what's the one thing you've enjoyed the most about becoming a pet, pet sitter spending time with the animals or and seeing them so happy when you walk in the door and they know they're a lot of them are going to be going for a walk and they're just jumping around and all excited, all excited. <laughs> and i was saying my favorite part is no pantyhose no, i don't even know if people wear those anymore i don't think but they anyway. do um <laughs> but, but not in an office <laughs> not stuck in an office you get paid to be outside all day uh paid you to play with puppies <laughs> yeah there's good and bad and we'll cats. get to the bad soon but yes the cats and you know they actually i would say don't even have to brush your teeth if you don't want to sometimes they prefer that you don't actually they like to sniff you see what you just ate so yeah and i tell them what i just had so right right uh so let's get to the negative you know there's positives and negatives negatives in every business what's what's some of the negatives that people might not consider about this particular job yeah. well sometimes you walk into the situation and maybe the dogs had diarrhea that is quite often especially when people are out of town it's not the midday walks you don't really see that but mm -hmm. it, it's mostly because the animals are a little bit upset their people are gone even though they're at home there might still be a little bit uncomfortable or they may have eaten something that yeah. Unpredictable. Unpredictable. Just, just, it's just unpredictable, so you don't know. Yeah. We're dealing with every single dog, even if it's of the same breed, has a different personality, different reactions. We go through that in the meet and greet as well. Is yeah. How does your dog react when you're not home? But we just have to be unpredictable. And the schedule can, therefore, you have to be okay that your plan may not be executed exactly. Yeah. The way you plan yeah, you're gonna be flexible because you are gonna walk into a situation where it's yeah. gonna you're gonna spend a little extra time so yeah. and sometimes it's you want to spend extra time oh yeah like this becomes like one of your heart dogs right and yeah. or it's a beautiful yeah. sunny day and you've got time in your schedule you to take them on a 45 minute walk exactly. instead of 30 minutes or or an hour and you're just you're just yep. enjoying them and enjoying the weather and that's kind of fun too um, Let's see, so we do background screenings on all of our pet sitters, which you passed, which is, if I didn't tell you that two years ago. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we require pet first aid and CPR trainings. Yep. We started the Fetch Find videos, which um, is all about pet behavior and loose, loose leash walking and training and all sorts of cat, how to medicate cats, pill a cat versus a dog or all sorts of different things. and so. How has that helped you do your job better? Uh, it helps you prepare for the uh, situations. You're, mm -hmm. You can, a lot of the things have, if you can catch the behavior of the animal and maybe prevent a situation from happening. That's, that's I, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, just having that tool in your back pocket. Exactly. Right, and being able to know that, I, I hope I never have to use it. Right. But. Uh, and understanding dog language and their yeah, body every, language a little bit exactly. better. Body yeah. language. That's where it's going to help prevent a situation. You can tell, sometimes you might not know if you didn't have that information that, okay, this dog is ready to jump when this when another person's coming by with yeah, another dog. You can feel dog. that, like can, anticipate it. Exactly. So. One of the things that I, you know, always get, whether it's, you know, 
at one of the two different businesses in the pet industry, you know, that I try and operate, uh, is <laughs> that we have to, um, you know, deal with these guys very differently. Every dog is different and we have to be prepared for the unexpected. So being um, proactive versus reactive. So we have to be always thinking, you know, when we go out and do a meet and greet and we've got a dog that's a little scared, okay, so what happens if um, a dog won't come out from underneath the bed? I, I, I've got stories. We should do a story. We should do a <laughs> weekly podcast with stories. Um, we actually had a dog that um, was hiding under the bed. We had taken care of it before. And funny thing, we got the owner on FaceTime on a video and put it by the bed and the dog actually responded to this client's voice and came out and then was fine. We we found out that in the past it had done that with a urinary tract infection. So, you know, there was uh, there was some medical stuff going on. So um, that was kind of fun. But um, what advice would you give to a, someone that wants to become a pet sitter? Well, you need to be prepared for the unexpected. Um, you want to have a flexible schedule and realize that weekends and holidays, that's when people are out of town. So your holidays <laughs> are going to change. You yes. may, Christmas and Thanksgiving, I'm always out on calls. So yeah, it's budget different. your time. <laughs> yeah, and, and you do have to, you have to think about it differently. And sometimes you can look at it as it sucks and I don't get a Christmas, or you can look at it as a little different, you know, of, uh, you know, getting up early, having the midday free, sometimes that works. Sometimes we do job shares where we team up on the holidays with another sitter and they'll do all the morning visits and then you do all the evening visits and it gives you half a day free. Although, if you've already got a full schedule, you can't really take on another sitter. So that has to be pre-planned, but there's ways to get around that. Yep. For me, it worked because I had little ones at home and it worked for me because the other 360 days of the year, I was able to be home. Uh, and not have them in full-time daycare. So for me, that was the trade-off. For other people, they have to look at what what is the payoff. You know, you can go punch a clock eight to five, which works for many, and this is not that. And some people don't like the idea of having to go out after dark in the winter and drive through <laughs> snow. Some of my favorite times doing visits was after it had snowed, and snowed, you know, a decent amount going out first thing in the morning when nobody's out and it was <laughs> yeah. just as peaceful and beautiful as could be and uh, so everybody looks at things differently well I also uh, one of the other questions you know burnout is the number one people reason people leave the pet industry in general overall not just pet sitting but what do you do outside of uh, pet sitting that helps you kind of keep your life as balanced as possible um. I <laughs> I used to like to go <laughs> go home and take Cody for walks Aww, all the time. Yeah. I would always manage to fit that in whenever around my schedule I'd leave time for him to go for a walk, but I'm not doing that and it's been a little tough this spring, I'll admit that. Those little fuzzy things that fall off the cottonwood trees this time of year, he used to love to eat those. So the mm. last couple days walking has been a little tough. Reminders, the little things. <laughs> the so little, little things, things but yeah. um, it's okay. They're good memories, so. Yeah, you go but, uh, spend time with your dad. I do, I go visit him, because he, um, since my ma mom passed away four years ago, we I try to go up there at least two or three times a week during the day and we go out to lunch, but I enjoy playing golf. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, we kind of I, I fit that around my schedule, but that's the opportunity of yeah. this schedule. Is some days you're not as busy, and you can still fit things around. And you're, it's during the week where you can get things done, whereas the weekends are so crazy with everybody out shopping and everything else. That yeah, <laughs> for sure. I know. I try not to shop during the weekend um, during the weekends. And, right. And so yeah. there's benefits. So. There are. <laughs> I uh, really puppy, puppy kisses. Well, yeah, puppy breath. <laughs> She's in the pet spa all the time. I am. She might actually know how to groom dogs by now because she hangs out and watches my groomers work on dogs. So, um, so it's easy to grab her for a quick video. Uh, we thank you for watching this. We're hoping that it gives you a little bit of insight into who we are and what we do, and we hope to um, continue interviewing the you know our the other sitters on our team and giving you just a little taste of who we are 
And so thank you all and 